He is coming. Cover your butt. Hey guys, before I start the video, I'd like to give a big thanks to a talk in Discourse. Today we have Eric Dubay's 200 proofs that the Earth isn't a spinning ball. 200 proofs Earth is not a spinning ball by Eric Dubay. 43. If Earth was a ball, there are several flights in the southern hemisphere which would have their quickest, straightest path over the Antarctic continent. Instead of taking the shortest, quickest route in a straight line over Antarctica, all such flights detour all manner of directions away from Antarctica, instead claiming the temperature is too cold for airplane travel. The conditions are too cold for airplane travel. If an airplane were to crash into Antarctica, the survivors wouldn't have much chance of surviving. Plus, there are no airports there. Which makes sense considering the fact that Antarctica's population is zero. 44. If Earth was a ball, and Antarctica was too cold to fly over, the only logical way to fly from Sydney to Santiago would be a straight shot over the Pacific, staying in the Southern Hemisphere the entire way. Refueling could be done in New Zealand or other Southern Hemisphere destinations along the way, if absolutely necessary. In actual fact, however, Santiago to Sydney flights go into the Northern Hemisphere, making stopovers at LAX and other North American airports before continuing back down to the Southern Hemisphere. Such ridiculously wayward detours make no sense on the globe, but make perfect sense and form nearly straight lines when shown on a flat Earth map. This is simply just to save money. There are more flights between Australia and North America, and North America and South America. So a pilot can fly from Australia to North America, and collect any North Americans who want to travel to South America. This is much more efficient than just doing it on separate flights. Proof 45 is the same as 44, except using flights from Johannesburg to Perth. Proof 46 is the same as 44, except using flights from Cape Town to Buenos Aires. Proof 47 is the same as 44, except using flights from Johannesburg to Sao Paulo. Proof 48 is the same as 44, except using flights from Chile to Johannesburg. 49. If Earth were a spinning ball heated by a sun 93 million miles away, it would be impossible to have simultaneously sweltering summers in Africa, while just a few thousand miles away, bone-chilling frozen Arctic and Antarctic winters experiencing little to no heat from the sun whatsoever. If the heat from the sun traveled 93 million miles to the Sahara Desert, it is absurd to assert that another 4,000 miles further to Antarctica would completely negate such sweltering heat, resulting in such drastic differences. Because of the Earth's sphericity, places perpendicular to the direction of heat and light from the sun are warmer than places at a higher angle. This is because the same amount of energy is being spread out over a different amount of area. The less area it is spread upon, the higher the concentration of energy and the warmer the area is. However, when it is spread upon a larger area, the temperature is cooler. This is why it's warmer during summer, cold during winter, and also why it's warmest during midday as opposed to sunset. The angle relative to the sun changes throughout the day or year, decreasing at midday or summer, and increasing during winter or sunset. Dubai just doesn't understand the way energy is distributed over the Earth because of its true shape. 50. If the Earth were truly a globe, the Arctic and Antarctic polar regions and areas of comparable latitude north and south of the equator should share similar conditions and characteristics, such as comparable temperatures, seasonal changes, length of daylight, plant and animal life. In reality, however, the Arctic and Antarctic regions and areas of comparable latitude north and south of the equator differ greatly in many ways entirely inconsistent with the ball model and entirely consistent with the flat model. First, we must establish the fact that Antarctica and the Arctic are slightly different. The Arctic is mostly frozen ice, part being Greenland. Greenland is where most Arctic life live, with the exception of polar bears. The southern part of Greenland is the most hospitable, and also not in the Arctic Circle. So they don't experience dark, cold winters like Antarctica does. Antarctica, on the other hand, is all in the Antarctic Circle, which means that the entire continent can experience few months of snow and darkness. Even when it is summer for the Southern Hemisphere, Antarctica is just too far south to experience the warmth of the sun. Greenland, being partly out of the circle and much closer to the equator, gets warm enough to slightly melt during the summer. 
If you understand the positionings of these landmasses relative to the Earth's tilt and angle to the Sun, it becomes clear why Antarctica is so cold. 51 is the same as 50 except actually comparing temperatures between the Antarctic and Arctic. 52 is the same as 50 except that comparing plant life. 53. At places of comparable latitude north and south, the sun behaves very differently than it would on a spinning ball earth, but precisely how it should on a flat earth. For example, the longest summer days north of the equator are much longer than those south of the equator, and the shortest winter days north of the equator are much shorter than the shortest south of the equator. This is inexplicable on a uniformly spinning, wobbling ball earth, but fits exactly on a flat model with the sun traveling circles over and around the earth from tropic to tropic. This is because the earth is salted and its orbit is elliptical. The earth is closer to the sun during the northern hemisphere's winter. This means that the earth has to rotate less in order for the same side to face the sun again. This happens the other way round for summer. So in the northern hemisphere, shorter days are shorter and longer days are longer. Proof 54 is the same as 53, except, well, there is no except. It really is just 53 again. Proof 55 is, you guessed it, the same as 53, with a bit of 50 thrown in just to spice things up. 56. The midnight sun is an arctic phenomenon occurring annually during the summer solstice where for several days straight, an observer significantly far enough north can watch the sun traveling circles overhead, rising and falling in the sky throughout the day, but never fully setting for upwards of 72 plus hours. If the earth were actually a spinning globe revolving around the sun, the only place such a phenomenon as the midnight sun could be observed would be at the poles. Any other vantage point from 89 degrees latitude downwards could never, regardless of any tilt or inclination, see the sun for 24 hours straight. To see the sun for an entire revolution on a spinning globe at a point other than the poles, you would have to be looking through miles and miles of land and sea for part of the revolution. Completely, utterly wrong. The Earth is tilted on an axis of 23.4 degrees. When the northern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun, anywhere on the poles or 23.4 degrees south of that can witness the midnight sun. This is because the earth is tilted and points the arctic circle towards the sun. Proof 57 is the same as 56 with the added bonus of a lie about not having footage of a 24 hour daylight in Antarctica and that you can't go to Antarctica to film it yourself. 58 is the same as 56 except referencing the Royal Belgium Geographical Society while providing no citation. 59. Quoting Gabrielle Henriette, The theory of the rotation of the Earth may once and for all be definitely disposed of as impracticable by pointing out the following inadvertence. It is said that the rotation takes 24 hours and that its speed is uniform, in which case, necessarily, days and nights should have an identical duration of 12 hours each all the year round, with the result that it would be the equinox every day from the 1st of January to the 31st of December. One should stop and reflect on this before saying that the Earth has a movement of rotation. The length of day and night vary because of the Earth's actual tilt relative to the Sun. When the Northern Hemisphere is tilted towards the Sun, it's summer and the days are longer. As you can see on this map, the darkness is closer to the Southern Hemisphere and all of Antarctica is dark. There is more darkness situated in the South and the days are shorter there. The amount of Earth in darkness remains the same all year round, but the darkness relative to the Earth moves. Fast forward three or nine months to the equinox, and day and night are equal. This is because the Earth is tilted and orbits a star. A big thank you to Young Blue Skeptic for helping out in debunking Eric Dubay's 200 proof. Next time we will reach the part of Dubay's book where he just copies and pastes from Robotham.